Dissolved oxygen is the volume of oxygen that is contained in water. Dissolved oxygen is vital for the survival of fish, aquatic invertebrates and amphibians. Dissolved oxygen is added to water through photosynthesis or disturbance to the water surface. Oxygen is lost from the water when temperature rises or when microorganisms are feeding on decaying organic matter. Prolonged exposure to low oxygen levels can eventually kill life in the river. You must wear latex gloves and safety glasses when handling chemicals for this test. Take extreme care when handling these chemicals as the number three solution is very strong sulfuric acid. Have a waste container ready to discard chemicals and other waste. These should be diluted and disposed of safely in the sewerage system once you have completed all your sampling at the site. The dissolved oxygen test requires the following steps. Step 1. Collecting the sample. The dissolved oxygen sample requires a special collection method to ensure that no additional oxygen is added to the sample water. This ensures that only the amount of oxygen in the water is actually measured. The following procedure should be followed when collecting the sample. Rinse the appropriate DO bottle or tube with sample water twice and recap the sample bottle. Always pour the rinse water downstream of where the sample is taken. Turn the sample bottle on its side and lower it into the water until the sample bottle is fully immersed. Unscrew the lid of the sample bottle, allowing the water to enter. Turn the sample bottle upright while still under the water to allow it to fill completely and release all the trapped air. Recap the bottle while it is immersed under the water. Remove the bottle from the water and turn it upside down to check that no bubbles have been trapped inside. If bubbles are present, repeat the filling procedure until no air bubbles are present. Collect the colorimeter bottle sample in the same manner. Place your sample in the cooler bag until you are ready to proceed with the test. Take the temperature reading at the same place where the DO sample was taken immediately after the dissolved oxygen sample is collected. Step 2. Test Procedure The test procedure for dissolved oxygen varies depending on the type of kit you have. DC 1200 kit. Hold the DO sample tube, which has been filled with sample water, above the liquid waste container and carefully remove the lid. Add 8 drops of magnumous sulphate or DO reagent number one. Reagent bottles must be held vertically upside down or standard drops will not be delivered. Recap the bottle and wipe the tube dry with a paper towel. Invert the bottle several times to mix the sample. Add eight drops of alkaline potassium iodide iodide or DO reagent number two to the sample in the same manner. Recap the DO sample tube Invert the DO sample tube several times to mix the solution. A brown precipitate will appear. Stand the DO sample tube and wait until the precipitate has settled to at least halfway down the bottle. This will take five or more minutes if the water is saline. The browner the solution, the more oxygen will be present. Hold the DO sample tube over the liquid waste container and carefully uncap it. Add eight drops of sulfuric acid, DO reagent number three, to the sample. Recap the DO sample tube. Invert the DO sample tube for several minutes until the precipitate has completely dissolved. All brown flakes must be totally dissolved and the liquid should be pale yellow or straw color. If the water has a high DO level, this may take several minutes. If brown flakes remain after five minutes, Add four further drops of sulfuric acid and continue mixing. With the DC-1200, you'll have to conduct a modified Winkler method titration to determine the amount of oxygen in the sample water. Hold the 20 milliliter vial over the liquid waste container and fill to the 20 milliliter mark with treated sample. Recap the vial. Remove the sodium thiosulfate and tritate a syringe from the kit. Check the plug has been inserted into the thiosulfate bottle. Draw the plunger back halfway and insert the tip of the titrator syringe into the small hole in the top of the sodium thiosulfate bottle. Push the plunger in to expel the air into the bottle. 
Turn the bottle and titrate a syringe upside down and while supporting both, slowly pull back on the plunger until the stopper is aligned with the zero line. If bubbles form on the stopper, push the plunger in and redraw sodium thiosulfate. This may have to be done several times to eliminate the bubbles. Turn the bottle upright and carefully remove the titrator syringe. Insert the titrator syringe into the hole in the lid of the 20 milliliter vial. Add one drop of sodium thiosulfate at a time by depressing the plunger and gently swirling between each drop. Continue adding single drops of sodium thiosulfate, swirling a few times in between each drop until the liquid changes to straw or pale yellow colour. Remove the cap from the titrator, leaving the syringe in place and add 8 drops of starch indicator to the liquid in the vial. The solution will turn deep blue. The starch indicator is added to make the titrator endpoint easier to see. Recap the vial. Continue adding drops of thiosulfate, swirling between drops until the blue turns from blue to clear in one drop. This is the end point of the reaction. Occasionally, the sample may require more than 10 units of sodium thiosulfate to reach the end point. Before refilling the titrator syringe, rinse the tip with deionized water and dry it with a paper towel. Five units of sodium thiosulfate will be more than is required to finish the titration. Record the number of units of sodium thiosulfate used this is the equivalent of the milligrams per litre of dissolved oxygen in the sample water. If you have a Smart or Smart 2 kit, you need to follow the following procedure. Hold the DO sample tube which has been filled with sample water above the liquid waste container and carefully remove the lid. Add two drops of manganese sulphate solution, DO reagent number one, to the sample water. Reagent bottles must be held vertically upside down or standard drops will not be delivered. Add two drops of alkaline potassium iodide izide, DO reagent number two, to the sample water using the same method as for DO reagent one. Recap the DO sample tube and wipe the tube dry with a paper towel. Invert the DO sample tube several times to mix the solution. A brown precipitate will appear. Stand the DO sample tube and wait until the precipitate has settled to at least halfway down the bottle. This will take five or more minutes if the water is saline. The browner the solution, the more oxygen will be present. Hold the DO sample tube over the liquid waste container and carefully uncap it. Add two drops of sulfuric acid, DO reagent number three, to the sample. Recap the DO sample tube and wipe it dry with a paper towel. Invert the DO sample tube for several minutes until the precipitate has completely dissolved. Rinse the 10 ml DO colorimeter tube with treated sample over the liquid waste container. The solution should not contain any specks as this will reduce the accuracy of your result. Clean and dry the colorimeter tube with a lint-free cloth to remove all smudge marks and fingerprints. Using the Smart 2 colorimeter, press and hold the on button until colorimeter turns on. Press enter to start. Press enter to select testing menu. Select all tests from the testing menu. Scroll and select test 39 dissolved oxygen from the menu. You can use the blank colorimeter bottle you prepared earlier for the available phosphate test. Clean the blank colorimeter tube with paper towel to remove all smudge marks and fingerprints. Insert the blank tube into the colorimeter. Close the lid and select Scan Blank. Remove the blank from the colorimeter. Clean the DO colorimeter tube with paper towel to remove all smudge marks and fingerprints. Insert the DO colorimeter tube into the colorimeter chamber. Close the lid. Select Scan Sample. The result is displayed in milligrams per litre. Step 3. Calculation of percentage saturation of DO. The amount of oxygen that can be held in water is related to the temperature of the water. 
cooler water can hold more oxygen than warm water. The percentage saturation of oxygen is the amount of oxygen in the sample compared to the amount of oxygen that the water can hold at that temperature. You can calculate the percentage saturation at the site by using the graph in the Water Watch manual. Too much oxygen is referred to as supersaturation of oxygen and may indicate excess algal growth. Too little oxygen will affect the health of aquatic species. Step 4. Cleaning your equipment. Cleaning the titrator syringe. Pour a small amount of deionized water into the small beaker. Draw water into the syringe and expel into the beaker twice. Dry the outside of the syringe with a paper towel. Rinse the beaker twice with deionized water over the liquid waste container. Remember to rinse the vial and its cap twice with deionized water over the liquid waste container. Clean the titrator syringe. Turn the colorimeter off and return all equipment to the kit after use.